Chasing Tales, Episode 45, Fireflies at Dusk. Last episode, we began to see signs of trouble on the horizon for Pink. What will she do when she sees Cyric? Will Gabrielle thwart her plans? Let's dive back in and find out. In Lucy's throne room, Gabriel waits. She signs some papers for Paul. Paul sneers at him as he passes. Mm. Gabriel rattles his wings threateningly. Boys, behave. You'll get your chance to tussle soon enough. Paul sticks his tongue out and closes the door behind him. Gabriel genuflects before Lucy. My lady. Hmm, what could be so urgent? You came to see me. Here. Well, you could not come to me. Oh? Are you coming to the dark side, Gabriel? No, my only wish is that you will come back to us. I was wondering if you know of any plans to free Ald. Lucy puts on her best liar's face and walks up to him, kissing him gently. The angel blushes. No. Why would I want things to change? I like being the only authority somewhere. I understand, but you don't know of any plan? I can't tell you anything. Even if I could, you are beholden to the being in charge. That is true. Lucy leans to him. He breathes in her essence. Gabriel, what about when I'm in charge? I would sleep at your feet, lady. Wherever you go, I'll go. (laughs) Good. Well, I can tell you something for free. We are going to take over heaven. So you better be damned well certain of what side you're on. Gabriel's ears perk up. An attack? When? I have business to attend to. Of course. He ports back to heaven. Jack and Pink wander the village with Talon. They slide into the lodge. The spicy, meaty smell surrounds them. Let me see who's here. Hello? Anyone here? Astral? Jacob? Perdia comes through the curtain to the kitchen. Jack, my love! Jack smiles and waits. She rushes to him and he hugs her, spinning her around. <laughs> it's good to see her. Are you staying? I don't know yet. It depends on Pink. Ah, I always knew you loved her more than me. Can I get you a drink? Astro still making ambrosia. Ha! You don't spend thousands of years making good food for the gods and not have the best time drinking the non-worlds. Jack smiles watching her feathers and the wispy tendrils of her hair fly around in the breeze of her steps. He missed her warmth and matter-of-fact nature but he couldn't let that move him from what he needed to do. There would be time once Pink was settled. Pink looks around, suddenly aware of Cyric's presence. She summons a wave, using it to block the door to keep him out. Pink, are you in there? Let me in. We have to talk about this. No, I'm still angry. I'm not currently reasonable, and trust me, you want me to be reasonable. Jacob comes in with a picture. Hey, good to see you, mate. There has been a handful since you left. You gonna make an honest woman of her? Tame the beast, as they say. Shut up, Jacob, you meddling fool. Mind your business. Oh, I was only having a bit of fun. Don't be mad, Perry. Better get back to work before I step in it good. <laughs> Bayard and Jay come in after a few minutes. Mon dieu, I'm wet. Water? What's going on? Jack, you rascal. Have you finally shown your face so I can give it a dusting, mon ami? (laughs) Jack claps hands with Bayard warmly. (laughs) Feels like I never left. Time moves slowly here. Monsieur, I see you're recovered. Yes, Bayard, I'm fine, thank you. Perhaps you could join me later for a little walk among the fireflies. I like that. Thank you, Bayard. 
Pink pours a drink and gulps it down. She takes a deep breath. I suppose I should go deal with Cyric now. Won't you walk out with me, Bayard? I think my brother has more important business. But of course, my flower, let's go. She swipes the wave away from the door, and they walk out. Cyric is waiting, drawing in the dirt with a stick. Cyric, I'm ready to talk, but I have no problem sparring with you. I need you to hear me out. Perdia comes into the dining hall and gives Jack a quick peck on the cheek. Hey, hey, come back here. He grabs her hand and pulls her back to him. Two hundred years of being away was loaded into that kiss. Astral and Jacob watch dreamily from the door. Perdia smiles, her eyes still closed. I get back to work, or I'll have your guts for garters. <laughs> the noise from the yard is starting to pick up. They rush out to sea. Pink makes a dome around them. If things get wild, the onlookers will be protected. She takes a deep breath to calm herself. Cyric, why did you lie to me? Why did you make me think this was all my fault? When you were the one who pushed me through unprepared because I rejected you. He looks up, and her hands begin to glow. I didn't want to lie, but I was afraid you would mess up my plans. And I was angry. So you wasted a few centuries of my time for your feelings? A fireball whooshes past his head and hits the barrier. Cyric walks around her. She turns, keeping him in her focus. I had such big plans. Pink throws icy stars at him. His staff materializes and he spins it, shattering the ice shards before they can reach him. She catches him off guard with a wave of water, just strong enough to pull him off his feet. She moves closer to him. Outside the circle, the village watches intently as Cyric is rebuked by Pink. She hasn't harmed him, but that wasn't the important part. Could she get him to see reason here? Could she get him to say sorry? Perdia wiggles her fingers, making hand signs for odds, whispering the bets. Bayard tosses a bag of coins on Pink's outcome. Everyone else backs Cyric. And you didn't just hurt me. You sold out all of our people. I know you think rescuing them will be apologetic, but will it be enough for them to want to work with you? I don't know. You don't know. You don't know. I give you the benefit of the doubt, you unfeeling monster. She punctuates her feelings with a whirlwind to throw sand in his eyes. I was afraid you'd feel this way if you knew the truth. I wanted to tell you. But you can't admit to a mistake, can you? The whirlwind subsides as she steps closer. Her shadow falls on him. She offers her hand. He takes it and pulls himself off the ground. I did make a mistake. I thought we'd make our attack and it would be quick. Then the Terrans came. They routed us and we lost so many. And worst of all, there was no signs of you. My foolishness made me lose nearly everything. I'm sorry that you grieved, but all lessons are learned this way. And I won't build an army with you, not when I can stop this war. Even if you don't see them as living beings with a right to thrive, I do. I won't let you kill any more innocents. And another thing, I'm getting tired of being manipulated. If you want something, ask. And let it be okay when I say no. You will respect me because I respect you. Pink offers her hand to him. He sighs reluctantly. Head high, he nods. What are your terms? Let me negotiate with Ald. I promise I'll get you a good deal. How can you hope to create a solution with no bloodshed? He wanted the water as much as I did. You're just going to have to trust me. I will wait and see, but if it doesn't work, we'll do it my way. Can you forgive my betrayal? Fine. You'll have to work for it. She waves the shield away. Perdia pays a hefty purse to Bayard. The villagers head back to their tasks, chattering excitedly. All right, now come on, let me buy you a drink. They all go into the lodge and sit down around the table. Astral, could you get our friend a drink? I think he could use one. Pink lays a gold coin on the table. Do you really feel so certain you can pull this off? 
Oh, I'm 90% certain. A few drinks and dinner pass pleasantly as everyone wanders in. Finally, at dusk, Bayard stands and offers his hand to Pink. Are you ready for our walk, mon chéri? Pink makes eye contact with Jack and indicates Cyric. Jack walks over and sits by his friend and buys him another drink. Bayard and Pink walk out into the twilight. Fireflies can be seen twinkling like stars from here. They walk to the great oak tree that marks the boundary for the hunting plains beyond. Bayard leans against the tree and pulls her to him. He looks up and so does she. Above them the leafy canopy is lit up like the night sky with dancing fireflies. Bayard kisses her on the nose. <laughs> so my dear, how may I keep you happy so you don't break my heart in front of my friends? Pink turns around so her back is to him. She leans against him. Respect me, be honest and trustworthy and you'll receive all that in return. And if I give you love, will that be returned as well? We'll see. But I won't stop you from trying. He rubs his face against her silky hair. By the way... Mm -hmm. He slides his winnings into her hand. Your prize for today's challenge. Oh no, Bayard. I don't want your money. Didn't Peria tell you not to spend it all on me last time? Mm -hmm. Very well. I will find un petit cadeau. You cannot hope to refuse me on this. Well, all right, if you insist. Ah, <sighs> the fireflies are nice. Yes, quite beautiful. But I am not interested in their spark. I am interested in yours. Bayard tips Pink's face to him and kisses her. She lets herself enjoy it. Pink has sorted her feelings with Cyric. Jack is home at last, with someone waiting. Things are heating up with Bayard. And what of our angels? Will Gabriel double-cross them? Stay tuned for the next adventure of Chasing Tales, episode 46, Love and Robots. Chasing Tales, episode 45, Fireflies at Dusk. Thanks for listening. We are glad to have you back. Like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Leave a comment to let us know how you like things so far. Now, I'd like to thank the Buttermakers... You're all amazing. The Ginger Ranger narrates. Pink plays as herself. Alamo voices Bayard. The Gingerbread Man plays as Cyric. Viper Sword voices Lucy and Pariah. Mr. Blue Sky plays as Gabriel. Lamented Guide voices Jack. And Prony Maloney plays as the announcer on Jacob. All musics and sound effects are borrowed from YouTube. Except for guns, those come from Creeper. This is an original production, written and produced by Pink Salmon. The Gingerbread Man is the Wallace and Story Advisor. We hope you've enjoyed the story so far. If you'd like to support the project, you may donate to the link in the description.